I'm Dan Pincaldi of No Enemies Here Wargaming News. And you're watching No Enemies Here Wargaming News. <laughs> to the Great Heathen Army. This is a collection of eight Viking land battles set in a what would become England. Game designers Tom Russell. Duration of the game is 60 to 150 minutes. It's a two-player game. Solitaire suitability is high. It's a medieval theme. And get it while it's hot. Clash of Arms and Wings of the Motherland. The Air War over Russia, 1941 to 1945. And what you get with this game are 280 aircrafts, 280 ground unit counters, 70 ships, two game maps, war rule book, a rule supplement, example of playbook, a scenario book, one aircraft and ship, data card book, and player aid book. High flying dice games and strategic air command, all out thermonuclear war against the Soviet Union. It's a game designed by Paul Rohrball. What you got with this game are two 11 by 17 inch maps, 80 unmounted double sided counters, and one rule book. Strategic Air Command is an introductory level, low complexity war game simulation. RBM Studios and C3I Magazine number 33, The Waterloo Campaign, 1815, a game designed by Mark Herman. Waterloo Campaign 1815 is a low complexity war game focused on French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte's 1815 Belgian campaign that resulted in his final defeat at the Battle of Waterloo on June 18th. Canvas Temple Publishing and Admiral's War, World War II at Sea. Admiral War is a board game recreation of the strategic naval situation in World War II. And what you get with this game are two full color, full sized mounted maps, two full sized unmounted maps, four full sized unmounted super sized maps, four mounted counter sheets, a rule book, 20 colored six sided dice, and two player aid sheets. This is a game designed by Brian Herr. Decision Games and Strategy and Tactics Press. World at War issue number 70. Great Pacific War is a two-player strategic simulation of hypothetical campaigns fought between the United States and Japan in the Pacific theater of operations sometime in the 20s and the 30s. What you get with this game is a 22 by 34 inch map and 176 die cut counters. Compass Games and France 1944, The Allied Crusade in Europe, Designer Signature Edition. This is a game designed by Mark Herman. Complexity is 6 out of 10, Solitaire Suitability 9 out of 10. The time scale are monthly turns. The map scale is 32 kilometers per hex, 20 miles. Unit scale, Army Level HQ, Infantry Troops and Armored Divisions. This is a 1 to 2 player game, best with 2. Playing time is two to seven hours. And what you get with this game is a 22 by 33 mounted map, an eight and a half by 11 map, two counter sheets, two play rate cards, rules, designer's notes, six sided die. Are you waiting for it? And a box and a lid designed by Mark Herman, published by Compass Games. And the gentlemen of the Players Aid are rambling on and giving us a 2019 retrospective. Loud kids are in the background, and it's a 45 minute ramble. These guys just can't shut up. Guys, keep going on with an unboxing of Space Infantry Resurgence, a game published by Lock and Load Publishing, designed by Gotardo Zancani and Blackwell Herd. Blackwell Herd. That's a wicked name. I thought Gotardo Zancani was something, but this guy's Blackwell Heard. I mean, what is this guy, like a martial artist? Like a, a sword expert, you know what I'm saying? 
awesome. Tim Korchnoy of Bare Bones Wargaming gives us his thoughts and musings on the game Stalingrad Inferno on the Volga, a game designed by Emanuele Sant'Andrea, published by Vento Nuovo Games. of Hexes and Soldiers had a live stream a couple of days ago talking about stuff. Stuff is good. Gimpy of the Gimpy Gamer does a tank dual overview of a game designed by Mike Bertuccelli published by GMT. Also, Conflict of Heroes Storms of Steel Part 1. This is a game designed by Uva and Gunther Eichert published by Academy Games and does his review through part one of Tank Duo. Lock and Roll Publishing has a video out on the tactics training for World at War 85. And Devin, the OG, is on board and narrating and showing the changes from the previous volume of World at War 85 to the new volume of World at War 85 by Lock and Roll Publishing. Hairbrain Games is taking a look at his weekend games from January 1st to the 11th, 2020. And also Hair is taking a look at the strategy game, Top Gun. C3I Magazine reports that war game designer and good guy of the moment donates his royalties from a game called Fire in the Lake Insurgency in Vietnam to the Vietnam Veterans of America. It seems that he heard about their outreach program and decided to be a good guy and donate, so far, approximately $9,500 US. That's like a million dollars everywhere else. Good guy, Volko. A game for gamers, made by gamers, by Flying Pig Games. And Dad vs. Son continues his playthrough of Illusions of Glory, 1916, parts one and two. Dad and son are battling it out with Richard Borg's game, Command and Colors Napoleonics, published by GMT, and the scenario that they are playing is Fleury. And son is doing his own playthrough of Army vs. Aliens. Army vs. Aliens is a dice chucking game designed by Jason Serrato, published by Wiggles 3D. And I'd like to give a shout out to Tony Tusha for turning me on to Stephen Dolgus's website, where this week he does a playthrough, turn 27 of The Dark Valley, a game designed by Ted Racer and published by GMT, and also answers your questions on his 500 subscribers. Check them out. The itinerant hobbyist, Todd, takes a look or gives us an after action report of Lock and Roll Tacticals to the bridge. This must be a Heroes of Normandy and it's the battle for the Song Bridge. You want to know what's happening at the big board? I'll tell you what's happening at the big board. Big Man Kevin, CEO of his domain, <clears throat> has an interesting interesting or has interesting point of views on a decade of evolution um he talks about system mechanic innovation the ai for games funding production and kickstarter type stuff and components production quality and usability big man join us every saturday for wargaming news 
those who are friends, foes, and legends are featured in reviews, playthroughs, and unboxings. And drink scotch. And as Stuka Joe once said, the unboxings are the beauty pageant of the Wargaming World. Serious? Seriously? So join us every Saturday morning for this week's Wargaming news, reviews, and playthroughs, and some surprises. Really? These sons of b Are we okay with that? Is that, is that, what do you mean it doesn't sound sincere? Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Centurion's review of the punk rock band of War Game Review Institutions. The first game we're doing a review of on our website is Revolt on Antares from TSR. It's a 1980s micro game. Essentially, you are the, well, one of the players is the Terran player, and there's seven clans and the clans can join forces with you or, or they can join forces uh, with each other so uh, allegiances are, are different in the different scenarios and also there's a scenario where uh, aliens attack the planet and they try to make allies with some of the clans and some of the clans will ally with the Terran player so I think uh, traditional hex and shit war gamers will like this micro game better than they'll like a lot of the other micro games the uh, first game we're doing a first look at on our YouTube channel is Battle of the Bulge from Avalon Hill. This game has good components. This is the 1991 version and it's simple to play. I think uh, beginner and intermediate wargamers will like it. Uh, it. It's not quite as complex as the uh, original game, but it's still pretty good. And then the last game we're doing a first look at on our YouTube channel is the Cell Shell Rise Again from Victory Point Games. Essentially it's a zombie game where Confederate, dead Confederate soldiers come back as zombies. So looks pretty cool. I hope to try it sometime soon. Thanks for watching and hope to see you guys soon on our website and on our YouTube channel. Have a good evening. US Patriot 4163 takes a look at a Decision Games mini game, mini mini Vikings. Scourge of the North. This is a solitaire game. Fred of Omulidan's History and Board Games gives us an overview of the 1871 Paris Commune board game Red Flag over Paris, which he designed, Fred Serval, which will soon be published by GMT. Jan Heinemann of Let's Play History has about three videos out so far. We are Tuesday. And they're all in German, but I will attempt to decipher. I have the Enigma codes. One of the first games he plays is Warsaw. After that, I don't understand what he says. After that, he plays Junta with Hobby General and Friends. So this is a live playthrough of Junta. And then he plays in the Brech, number 61 Expeditions, Viking. The artist, the man, Matt White, reviews a war game that appeared in Vey Victus Magazine 147, Lex Saxonum, 722 to 785. Matt also gives you his thoughts and reviews the following game from Worthington Publishing, New York, 1776. Combat. Board Games is Unbagging The Winds of War by Richard Berg. This was a game published in a Against the Odds magazine. And it's a strange little game about a strange time near the end of the war where the Japanese flew hydrogen balloons from the jet stream winds of Japan to the coast of California. Yep. Richard Berg, ladies and gentlemen. Tony Kinnear is giving us his final thoughts and finishing off a game of Cell the December 23rd to 27th, 1944. He's playing the December 26th and 27 turns. As I said, giving us his final thoughts. This is a game published by Revolution Games. The Strong Man of War Games. Rob Oren of Rob's Tabletop World is taking a look at Paolo Mori's game, Blitzkrieg. He's taking a look at the Nippon expansion. That is the Japanese expansion, a game published by Plastic Soldier Company. Arvo 
Wolf is checking out Columbia Games, The Kingdom of Kaibisa. Art Wolf continues with his unboxing Vietnam Rumor of War by Compass Games, designed by Adam Starkweather. The Thursday Night Gamers are continuing their battle of the Library of Napoleon Battles, the coming storm of the battles of Jena and Auerstadt in 1806 Part 3. Kyle Seeley is giving us a little playthrough of Gaines Mill, the Battle of the Seven Days, June 1862, Volume 1. This is a Civil War Brigade series designed by David A. Powell and published by The Gamers. Gilbert Collins and Bonaparte at Marengo, the 14th of June, 1800. This is a game designed by Rachel Simmons. Also, Gilbert takes a look at an old Avalon Hill game published in 1958 called Gettysburg. Nick is back after a six-month hiatus and he's giving us a playthrough of Kernstown, a game published by Revolution Games using the Blind Sword series. A game designed by Claude Whelan. Awakening the Bear, third edition, available now. Stones of Steel, 3rd edition, available now. Also known as Homo Ludens here on YouTube as a war game reviewer, uh, but also recently started war game design. Dan invited me uh, to talk about my first published game that recently got integrated in uh, GMT's P500 process called Red Flag Over Paris. Uh, so the idea of this video is uh, that I walk you through the game and explain uh, to you guys a bit what it's all about. For those of you who don't know, uh, the Paris Commune in 1871 uh, is a socialist insurrection uh, that happened in Paris, uh, and that was the outcome uh, of the Franco-Prussian War of 1870. Uh, during three months between March uh, and May 1871, uh, there was a rise in tension uh, between two um, competitive governments. So we had one socialist government insurrection in Paris called the Paris Commune, and then uh, another government uh, that was in Versailles. This escalation in tension ended up in um, a bloody event uh, that was called the Bloody Week, uh, that was a huge massacre that put an end to the Paris Commune uh, and an end to um, a beginning of civil war that happened in France. So the game is about this. Uh, the game, uh, as you can see here, uh, is covering uh, geographical areas that you have. So you have uh, Paris uh, and forts surrounding the city. You also have Prussian occupied territories because the Prussian army was still in France at that time. And you got Versailles uh, just over here where the, the, the government was. And then you've got political spaces on the left. So, as you can see, it's a pretty s small war game. Uh, it's actually part of the lunchtime series that was introduced uh, by GMT uh, a year now, uh, yeah, a year ago now with Fort Center. And um, talking about Fort Center, uh, if you've already played Fort Center, you can see that this game uh, shares a lot of similarities with Fort Center. It's not by accident. Um, a lot of the same mechanics are actually reapplied in this game. You could say that Red Flag over Paris is powered by the Fort Sumter engine. So when you're looking at a turn sequence, actually uh, there is a lot of thing in common. Um, you have three regular turns and a final crisis. And during regular turns, it works the same way as Fort Sumter did. You deal four strategy cards, you deal two objective cards, 
uh, and then you play cards. Uh, resolve um, uh, dimensions and resolve objectives and score victory points. But apart from the original engine, Red Flag Over Paris has a lot of design bits that um, separates it from the original Fort Sumter design. I'm not going to go through all of them in this video, but I'm going to just highlight a couple of them just so that you understand how different the game is. The first thing I want to talk about is the cube economy. As you can see, the cube economy is a bit tighter in this game, you have less cube than in Fort Sumter, and they are not uh, disposed in the same way. On one hand, you see that the commune player has way more cube than the Versailles player, but it comes with two asymmetric mechanics that are called player momentum. For the commune player, the revolutionary momentum is a really important thing to focus on. At the beginning of the game, the commune player has no cube pool. Every cube that will be removed from the board will also be removed from the game. Increasing revolutionary momentum enables the commune player to store cubes in future turns, or to store bonus cubes that he might get when he breaches a level of crisis. This revolutionary momentum has three steps and makes up to four different spots available. On the other hand, the Versailles player has limited access to cubes at the beginning of the game, and he is at a big risk of triggering the final crisis really early on. The way to counteract that is Prussian Collaboration, his own player momentum track. Prussian Collaboration is actually a simulation of the fact that after the 1870 Franco-Prussian War, a lot of military resources were held up by the Prussian invader that had won a major victory against the French army. The more the Versailles player is going to collaborate with Prussia, the more he will get access to military resources that are provided by the Prussian invader, releasing prisoners of war and making sure that they could organize an efficient army that could potentially invade Paris and put an end to the insurrection. So this is one of the first differences that highlights um, a level of asymmetry that was introduced to the original system. Another important aspect is that Yes, you do have four dimensions like you had in Fort Sumter with political institutions, public opinion. Those are the forts surrounding Paris and those are the neighborhoods of the city of Paris. But as you can see, they are also divided in two categories. You've got political spaces and military spaces. And when it comes to queue placement, those two categories don't abide exactly by the same rules. And the idea is that uh, to be able to get into a space, you must already control the space that is adjacent to it. So at the beginning of the game, the Versailles player can access Mont Valérien and Fort Dici, whereas on the other hand, the commune player, who is already present and controlling Père Lachaise, has access to Butte Montmartre, Butte au Caille, and the Château de Vincennes. The idea is to give a tactical feel to those spaces. So it's not only about uh, taking control of a dimension, but is how will you get access to it? How you will you get access to specific spaces? It adds a small layer of decision making, not making necessarily the game more complex, but um, introducing some kind of reflections that were not necessarily existing um, in the original game. So if you're interested in the subject or interested by the game overall and or like Fort Center, which is an amazing design um, and would like to know more, you can go to my channel and check the video that will go through a bit more in depth about the game mechanics. Or you can go on GMT's website uh, to actually check out the P500 page where you have a lot of information about uh, the game, the history uh, around it. The game is intended that at uh, Grogner's but and also beginners and the idea is just to provide gateway card driven games for people who uh, don't necessarily want to play three or four hours uh, of historical gaming um, and it's just a way to get introduced to some uh, game mechanics that you would see in, in, in a lot of other card driven war games. So thank you for watching, I hope that you are interested in the game and feel free to reach out if you have any question and thank you Dan for giving me the opportunity to present the game. See you guys! Worthington Publishing and Crusader Kingdoms, War for the Holy Land, a game on the Crusades for one to four players with a solitary engine. Fight the Crusades in an hour, solo, cooperative, and competitive. And what you get with this game is a game box with beautiful Crusader art. I don't get it, people are selling game boxes. 
How else is the game going to come in? A double-sided hard mountain game board. 50 wooden castle pieces, 50 wooden printed garrison pieces, a deck of Muslim cards, Crusader cards, two rule books, and five custom dice. <laughs> The Professor Ricardo Mazzini has vlog, or W-L-O-G, 37, Ludography, where he speaks about the game and the artwork, where the artwork stimulates the game. Mauro Faina has a couple of episodes out. He's got episode 46, Stalingrad 42 of Mark Simonich. Also episode 47, Il Gianni Zero Nero. And episode 48, Masters of the Night. The BFG Con 2020, the Big Frederick Gaming Convention, March 13th to 15th, 2020 in Frederick, Maryland. Prescon 2020, February 24th to March 1st in Charlottesville, Virginia. Consum World Expo Dallas, featuring WarGameClassics.com. March 6th to the 8th, 2020 at the Delta Hotel Dallas, Allen, 777 Waters Creek Boulevard, Allen, Texas. There's going to be war games. Euro games, special events, flea market tables, exhibitor sales, seminar, and special guest is Mark Herman. If you want to get your feet wet, the Dice Tower Cruise is happening, leaving Fort Lauderdale January 24, 2020, and coming back Wednesday, January 29, 2020. Check out the Dice Tower webpage for more information. In London, England, Cardboard Emperor's Strategy and War Games, the 21st and the 22nd of March, 2020, in the main room, Young Chelsea Bridge Club. Breakout, 2020, where? In Toronto, when? March 20th to the 22nd, 2020. The premier tabletop gaming convention in Toronto, Canada. Gary Con 12, March 26th, to the 29th, 2020, in the Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, USA. This con is named after Gary Gaitax, the creator of Dungeons & Dragons. Scrum Con, one day of tabletop RPGs and miniature wargaming. February 29th, 2020, where? At the Silver Springs Civic Building, one veteran place, Silver Springs, Maryland. Cold Wars 2020, March 12th to March 15th, Wyndham Lancaster Resort and Convention Center in Lancaster, PA. 2020 Seven Year War Association Convention is being held at Waterford Estate Lodge, 52890 Indiana State Route 933, South Bend, Indiana. This will be held from April 2nd to April 4th 2020. Historic on 2020. This will be taking place July 8th to 12th, 2020 at the Lancaster County Convention Center. Mr. P, we've got the results back and it's confirmed that you have prostate cancer. What? What? No, Mr. Prostate cancer. Me? Why didn't I check this me? What was I positive. thinking? Why didn't I check this sooner? What was I somebody thinking? Tell me what to do. Both have their risks. Other people they got this. Why didn't somebody tell me? I thought other people got it. Of course, got any with with prostate. How did I end up like this? We can discuss this. How am I gonna tell your wife? Do you have any family? questions? Family? My friends? This happens all too often. Someone getting bad news. We want you to know. You are not alone in your journey. 52 Conversations is a Facebook page dedicated to men going through prostate cancer. This podcast explores prostate cancer through the interview process with men in different stages of the illness. Tune in every month to learn and listen to their stories. Because you owe it to yourself, man. Another week, another show. Thank you very much for watching this. I love doing this. 
Thank you to my supporters. If you'd like to support this channel, that keeps me going. Subscribe, please, and give some comments, you know? I started something else called No Enemies Here in Conversation, where, basically, people can call on me, I can call on them, and we just sit around for half an hour, and we talk about war games, fishing, whatever. But there's always a war game angle to it. So, thanks again, and... Tune in, and I'll see you next week. C3I Magazine reports that war game designer and good guy of the moment donates his royalties from the game Vietnam. C3I Magazine reports that war game designer and good guy of the moment donates his royalties from his game. For fuck's sakes, what's the game? Fire in the lake, okay. Oh, man.